Hello dear colleagues, let us start today uh, my introduction about chemoinformatics and I would like to pr uh, present myself. I'm a professor, uh, Sergei Shityakov, the head of bioinformatics and chemoinformatics group at the Scientific uh, Infochemistry Center, ITMO University. And today I would like to give you a brief introduction about the Mm, chemoinformatics. So, first of all, I would like to say a couple, a couple of words uh, what we are doing in our uh, Infochemistry uh, Scientific Center uh, in terms of the chemoinformatics projects. And we are developing the virtual screening techniques, uh, creating virtual library, uh, trying to develop quantitative structure activity relationship models of different chemical substances and uh, the, the, the important uh, validation using important validation protocol and we're trying to uh, implement some experimental uh, algorithm some experimental techniques to validate uh, different chemoinformatics models as you can see here we have uh, some uh, proteins uh, with some ligands uh, where we're trying to investigate the protein ligand interaction and trying to create some modeling, the regression modeling. Uh, and this regression modeling would help us to design a new and more potent uh, substances. And if we would like to proceed further, we would uh, come up with a new medication to treat different diseases. On the other hand, we are also interested in, in uh, trying to create some protein-protein uh, uh, interaction maps, as you can see here, uh, to have more understanding on how the proteins interact with each other in terms of the uh, systems biology and bioinformatics. Uh, there are different definitions of uh, chemoinformatics, and here I would like to give you some examples on what, are, what is the chemoinformatics and how we can implement chemoinformatics in our research. So, um, some uh, definitions uh, considering chemoinformatics as a generic term uh, that encompasses the design, creation, organization, management, retrieval, analysis dissemination and visualization and use of uh, chemical information. So it's a kind of a broad term. Mm. Some researchers consider chemoinformatics as a, as a mixture of information resources uh, to transform data into information and information into the knowledge for the intended purposes of making better decision, faster, in the area of uh, drug design to optimize the, the drugs and make it more uh, potent against different diseases. Chemoinformatics is also the application of informatics techniques to solve uh, different chemical pro problems. So if uh, we have some, uh, some projects where we can have um, some experiments analyzing different chemical entities, then we are using some uh, informatics algorithm to process this uh, chemical data. On the other hand, chemoinformatics is also a field uh, based on the represent representation of the molecules as objects, graphs and vectors in a, a chemical space. And uh, therefore, chemoinformatics would be considered as a, in a discipline trying to analyze the chemical uh, space, which is vast in terms of the uh, quantity of different substances. Here I would like to uh, give you some, uh, uh, some introduction on uh, what are the um, uh, topics where we're trying to uh, discuss in uh, chemoinformatics. And here we, uh, we are going to, uh, to, to touch the, the fields such as uh, virtual compound library, uh, structure-based design, ligand-based design, fragment design, and also the, uh, the fields where we are trying to uh, merge uh, chemoinformatics 
approaches with different mm, biomedical uh, approaches such as uh, geno uh, chemogenomics database creation. Additionally, uh, one could also uh, think about the difference between chemoinformatics and bioinformatics. And uh, here you can see the representation of the uh, bioinformatics fields where uh, the, the researcher is more focused on uh, the processing of uh, different biological molecules, usually a big biological bio. Um, biological entities such as protein, nucleic acids, uh, which comprises genomes and uh, all different algorithms that can help to process this information. Therefore, one could uh, uh, subdivide bioinformatics into different fields such as health and drug discovery, managing the big data, development of new algorithms and statistics, analysis and interpretation of the big data, development and Im implementation of different bioinformatic tools, and prediction of protein structure and, uh, and function. I would like to you to pay attention to the uh, chemoinformatics uh, cycle for the uh, rational drug design and discovery and uh, and the first thing you, we have to do is to uh, uh, to use the the library uh, the virtual library of different substances chemical compounds uh, which could be small enough or which could be large enough such as um, uh, starting from hundreds or thousands of molecules to uh, uh, hundreds uh, of, of, uh, of millions or even uh, billions of different substances. And in order to come up to some uh, uh, potent substances, we have to do the virtual screening of these libraries using different algorithms, such as uh, genetic algorithm. And when we uh, do the screening, we have to pay the attention to some parameters like a uh, like the speed of the uh, of this analysis and the uh, uh, complexity of uh, different parameters we would like to, to analyze. Therefore, there are some techniques which will give us the, the benefits in terms of the speed and accuracy and the other maybe more, uh, more time consuming but the, the more precise. Uh, so one could also divide these uh, virtual screening techniques into two categories. One is the, one category implements the technique which are uh, less uh, time consuming and the other which is more time consuming. And once we have some a small library of selective heats, we would like to uh, validate them using uh, different uh, in vivo or in vitro experiments which are also very laborious and time consuming, not to mention they're also very expensive. And uh, when we finished with uh, these uh, preclinical experiments and we, if we are successful, then we will uh, go to the next uh, stage that would be the, the clinical trials. And then after that, if the, the substance is proven to be worthy, then probably we are reaching the, the market with our new, more potent medications. So I would like to finish with the introduction and thank you for your attention.